My name is Peter Augustine and this is Meshman's Node Fundamentals. Here in Mori I wanna quickly here build a like a layered approach using a channel with some layers just to see here what Mori does under the hood so we understand when we build our node graph from scratch what to do. So first off here we have a channel here I created and there we have it nodes here. So let's take my layer palette here and dock it on top there. So first off here um, it's quite common to create you know like layers and maybe a color so let's take a color just a constant I want to make this some kind of color here blue maybe okay so we want to populate this now so I created my color I have a layer so let's project something onto that like standard so we have a mix of painted and procedural data that's kind of what I want to do here so let's paint this on here quickly okay so let's also say that we want to have a tree planner projection or something tree planner projection on top okay so we want to populate this tree planner projection with something and we want to take some textures here so with my tree planner projection i just want to drag these on top here and this one set size something like like so the multiply darken multiply and set the strength here so this is yes common stuff yeah so yeah let's say that uh, this is uh, what we want to create in the node graph so let's take a look at how we can achieve that i'm just going to close this one let's close the layers and go over to the node graph to see what mori has built here under the hood so we understand what's happening so this is my default channel this on the diffuse and now let's take a look here this is what mori did here under the hood and it's it's a big mess to be honest here in the no graph yeah uh, first off this button here on the no graph here we get this pop-up here if you have it set up as uh, default so let's take all of these here so this let's dissect this now first off you can hit the l button and it will uh, lay out your nodes so it's not as messy and now here let's start to dissect this so actually i'm gonna dock now my layers so we can see the comparison here so let's dock my layers there and take a look at this structure here that i built so the base here so let's take a look at the base here this is the node that's always created so if i create a here a channel let's create a new one just a dummy the dummy channel here if you look at here at the channel we can see here it the name dummy this is the equivalent you see 16 here looking at this the node properties here we see it's 16 bit so essentially the channel node that you can create is going to be like a, a point to export and also the settings for the, the the export and the channel it's a bit um different when you create the node graph by yourself because yeah when you create it using channels there's a few things that's controlled by the channel that is not really the case when you build the node graph for example some of it it has to do with color management and stuff if i create a, a manual node here you see that the color management here on my node when i hit the m button is enabled when i have a 16 bit channel this is essentially disabled so that's one of the few differences but that's going to be more about that in upcoming episodes so yeah you can see here if i go to my layers on this you see base this is the the base that's a name and the layers in the layer stack is essentially a merge node so here in my node graph you see this is a merge node if i hit the m button i get this this is a merge node and this one will merge two inputs you have the base and the over and the mask so for example if i want to create something similar to this one with the the blue uh, background and the logo so i can hit the tab tab is a shortcut to search for nodes and you can also hit this and go through all of them if you know the name but um, call for example color you get this node 
that's a procedural node, the same as we did over here. If I go back to my channel nodes and now dissect this one here. So we have the base, that's the auto created. Then I added this color and you see here it's a layer, but the layer is essentially just a merge node. And this is the data for the blue here. So let's take a look at, yeah, you can see here it's the blue. Then I added this layer here that I didn't name, but that's the my projection. So let's take a look at that. That's this one. And if you want to inspect a node, you hit the one or the two, depending on if you can now have up to nine different inputs. So if I go here, you see if I hit one, we see the blue. If I hit two, it's connected to this node and it's the logo. If I hit three on this one, it's going to be the merge node. So you can inspect your node graph from different points. So that's kind of like using this layer and below and whatever is current channel, current layer and below, current layer. So yeah, if you come from a, a channel and a layer perspective, this is the equivalent. The node properties is essentially the settings on the layer here. So if I would take here on my my color there, you can see here you get the settings. In the node graph, you have to go to the node and then you have this node properties panel here that it's docked here by default on the side there. So yeah, that's kind of it. And remember I added this tree plano projection. So this is the tree plano projection in my uh, node here. This is the actual node for the tree plano projection and all of the settings. You can also go here on my node graph and you see the same settings here. So they are the same. It's a bit different, but um, yeah. So why do you want to use the node graph? Yeah. So I use the node graph because it's it's easier for me to build really complex procedural stuff because you can essentially borrow a node, reuse it somewhere else. You can still do that in the layer graph, but to be honest, it's a bit you know copy and pasty. You have to remember where you got it from. When you have a node graph, you can see where the node is going. You can you can see like where this node is connected. If I create something down here and I want to borrow, uh, for example, this one there connected to this one and start with something else. It's much easier to borrow stuff, I think, uh, and build more, uh, you know, non linear uh, methods. So let's create this from scratch now. So when I want to recreate this using the node graph and I'm essentially going to build this from scratch. That's how I approach it. I never let Mara build anything for me when I create a node graph. So let's create this now. So what I if I would do this, for example, I usually start with a channel node just to have something like channel my nodes, for example. So the, just create a, an empty channel node here and start to hook up things so by default it doesn't have anything so it's gonna read as black i guess so yeah remember i made this blue so hit tab i want to have my color node here just to choose a procedural color and let's zoom in here and start to hook this up so first off i just drag my output here to the input and now we have the connection there. So this is the base layer and by default my color node here is white. So let's create the blue one. There we go. So now here I want to use a layer node. So let's uh, a layer like uh, my logo there. So if I select this one and hit the M button it inserts this merge node here. So by default it connects to the base. So that's cool. And now here we wanna project the logo onto this. So let's take it, I'm just gonna do wireframe so we see where we are heading. A paint layer in the channel node, then I need the paint node. So the paint node, if I hit the P button, then we get this add paint node. And here we have the patch size. In the channel workflow, the paint node is gonna get its default settings from the channel node but when I build this by default that's not really the case because you can have a mixed you can have like 16k paint in one layer or just 8 by 8 pixels or anything it's up to the paint node so that's a caveat so yeah 
I usually set it to the same when I create my channel node and say that it's 4K, I create my paint nodes in the same resolution. So, okay, so size here, we have the size, let's say 4K, 16 bit half, that's something I use for because I use ACES file space normal, and that's because, yeah, it's a paint, it's not a vector or anything. So here, yeah, here's the color and the full color. If I want to project a logo with transparency, I just want essentially a fully transparent. So this one, the alpha needs to be zero. Color space, ACES, this picks up my default uh, there. So here's my paint node. Let's actually now be smart here and rename stuff here. So logo, okay. So there's my layer in rename to logo. It's good to have some names uh, somewhere. I, I'm not renaming all my paint nodes, but uh, crucial uh, layers and stuff. So if you hit the N button, you get the uh, rename here, or you can double click and rename it here, logo. Okay, so I wanna have this on top there. And now we want some of my, uh, something to project. So I just gonna take my logo here, it's a PNG, just, Put it there and paint down and bake. So yeah, now we have uh, we're almost there now. You see here my logo, background logo, channel. So now we want to have a tree planner. So let's just hit the M button here again. So now we have a merge after this one. So yeah, remember tree planner. We just hit tab and start tree planner projection over and there you go so yes now we want, just want to populate this with um, my texture there as well so let's do that so this one okay so i want to have this one so i'm building this with more vanilla nodes now in later episodes i'm gonna use uh, extension pack nodes as well but for any new people or uh, non-commercial users i'm using only more nodes now so tree plan projection for you, that's like a round cube. It projects from the different size because if I look here at my UV are split up. So it will be seams here for you wouldn't use tree plan projection. And now I wanna multiply this darkening, multiply. So that's the blending mode. So if you come from a layer perspective, this is what you set on the layer there. Okay, and we just wanna slightly now slightly just knock this down here with some some of that okay so that's uh, that's kind of a usual scenario here and now let's go back here and compare so you see here my no graph here is a bit more compact essentially I didn't have this because I used this one is what it's auto creates I could have taken that away uh, when I build the layers but I didn't. Yeah, so this is a short rundown how we can build something with using nodes if you come from a layer and a channel perspective. So it's gonna be a series here of shorter, more focused on some aspects of building stuff in the node graph and procedural workflows to complement some more in-depth courses down the line. So yeah, uh, see you on the channel, bye-bye.